So now that we have reviewed a few simple matrices that are n by n but have special structure, and we've seen that for those matrices it is relatively easy to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, we're now ready to discuss the general case of an n by n matrix. And what we're going to see is that the characteristic polynomial is again going to be key. For general n by n matrices, there is also something called the determinant. For the 2 by 2 matrix and the 3 by 3 matrix, we saw how to compute it. And it is again the case that the matrix is non-singular if and only if the determinant is not equal to 0. Now, how is the determinant of A defined for n greater than 3? There is a formula for this, but it's actually a formula that has very little practical value. And therefore, we're not going to spend much time on it. What we're instead going to look at is what the implications are of the existence of the determinant and what it means for the determinant of a minus lambda i. So the determinant of a minus lambda i is again a polynomial. It turns out to be an nth degree polynomial if the matrix is n by n. And if a has real valued elements, then its characteristic polynomial has real valued coefficients. So let's review what we know about polynomials, in particular polynomials with real valued coefficients. Here we have the prototypical polynomial that we will concern ourselves with. And notice that the coefficient for the lambda to the nth power term is 1. We learned in high school that such a polynomial has n roots, although some of the roots may be equal to each other. So we state it has n roots counting multiplicity. It has k distinct roots, where obviously k is less than or equal to n. And we can factor any polynomial into these factors lambda minus a root, raising each of those factors to some power. Adding all of those powers together has to give us n, the degree of the polynomial. The power to which the jth such term is raised is known as the multiplicity of that root. And even if the coefficients of this polynomial are real, some or all of the roots may be complex valued. If there are complex valued roots, they come in conjugate pairs, which means that if lambda is a complex value that is a root, then it has a real part and a complex part. And if it's lambda sub r plus i times lambda sub c, its conjugate is the same expression except with the plus replaced by a minus, and that's known as the conjugate of that value. In this case, the conjugate of the given root. Now here is the really annoying thing. There's something called Galois theory. And a consequence of Galois theory is that if you have an arbitrary polynomial of degree n greater than or equal to 5, you cannot compute its roots in a finite number of computations. Now, that doesn't mean that there aren't polynomials of degree 5 or greater for which you can find the roots in a finite number of computations. It just means that there are polynomials for which you cannot. We are concerning ourselves specifically with characteristic polynomials. And what that means is that the nth degree polynomial comes from computing the determinant of a minus lambda i. Since that gives rise to an nth degree polynomial, you end up with n eigenvalues, which are the roots of that polynomial. We have k distinct eigenvalues, which are the roots of the polynomial. And notice that the multiplicity again has to add up to n, so these powers have to add up to n. And then the power to which a particular term is raised is known as the algebraic multiplicity of the eigenvalue that appears in that term. We're not going to dwell on this algebraic multiplicity very much. There are also something known as the geometric multiplicity. I'm just mentioning the term because you may hear that term in a subsequent course. Now, even if A has real valued entries, 
in, in which case the coefficients of the characteristic polynomial are themselves real valued. Some or all of the eigenvalues may be complex valued. And the complex eigenvalues then come again in these conjugate pairs. Here is the fundamental problem with computing eigenvalues of a general n by n matrix in a finite number of computations. We know that there are polynomials for which one cannot compute the roots in a finite number of computations. It turns out that if you form this matrix A and you compute the determinant of A minus lambda I, that turns out to be exactly that polynomial. So for any polynomial, you can find a matrix that has as its characteristic polynomial that polynomial. Now that's really annoying because if we had an algorithm that in a finite number of steps computed the eigenvalues of an arbitrary n by n matrix, then we could create this matrix right here, which is known as the companion matrix, and then the eigenvalues of that matrix would be the roots of the polynomial, and therefore we would have a means for computing the roots of any arbitrary polynomial in a finite number of computations. And that can't be according to Galois theory. Since this course is meant to connect the mathematics to computation, we've got a problem. So maybe we should just quit because we can't come up with an algorithm for computing the eigenvalues of a general matrix anyway. Well, let's not give up that easily because we're going to be satisfied with being able to approximate the eigenvalues. That's good enough, because after all, when we do computer arithmetic, we're continuously having to compromise on accuracy anyway, because we cannot store all of the real values. So in summary, for an n by n matrix, what do we know? We know that the roots of the characteristic polynomial, which is the determinant of a minus lambda i, are the eigenvalues of A. We know that there are n eigenvalues if you count multiplicity. We're going to call the set of all eigenvalues the spectrum of A, and we're going to denote it with this notation right here, capital lambda of A. Notice that that set has k elements, namely the distinct eigenvalues. The algebraic multiplicity of the eigenvalue lambda j is equal to the multiplicity of the root of the characteristic polynomial. And eigenvalues can be complex valued. If so, they come in complex pairs if matrix A starts having real valued elements.